What's going on, everyone? Hope you're doing well. Tuesday, December. It's cold, I guess. I guess I'd rather be in here than most places. I mean, I'd, I'd like to be at home, but at least it's warm in here, right? So um, we're going to finish, like I said. And um, I'm not going to lie. It was a little sad. A little bit sad. There's a scene. Came out of nowhere. I'd like to talk about it. See if it rings true to you. Something didn't ring true to me. We'll, we'll just have to talk about it. Hopefully we had a good class discussion. A couple big things I think that happened yesterday was Miss Finian. Miss Finian. I always get her name wrong. But it's Miss Finian, right? His old girlfriend, teacher kind of thing. Like she came around, paid his rent. That's good. And he told her, go away. And then uh, remember the doctor, like a doctor came and examined him. And his landlady, they were looking at each other, like the doctor and like the doctor gave her like a wink and a smile when Charlie said, oh, I used to race a mouse. I'm like, oh, yeah. And he got really mad, like he kicked the doctor out. So he is aware now when people are making fun of him. That's probably going to disappear, too, just like every other bit of his intelligence. But he is quite a bit different from how he was at the beginning, just oblivious to what was going on. And now he's aware. So I don't know what's better <clears throat> being. Out of, I mean, I think being aware, but geez, poor Charlie. All right, let's make this bigger. I didn't realize that this was right at the end of the last progress report we read. So we did not read, the, read this line. Please, please let me not forget how to read and write. We already know that he he's, he can still read and write. But he can't read what he's already written just a couple weeks ago. So slowly going down. I think someone in one of the classes made the analogy to, um, you know, like dementia, Alzheimer's disease. You know, it's his memory quickly is fading. But um, or his, his uh, not his memory, but his uh, cognitive ability, I guess, to use a, a kind of a bigger term there. All right. Back to this. Mr. Donegan was very nice when I came back and asked him for my old job of janitor. First, he was very suspicious, but I told him what happened to me. Then he looked very sad and he put his hand on my shoulder, said, Charlie Gordon, you got guts. So that right there, I mean, like, that's pretty good for his boss to do that, right? He actually seemed sincere. Everybody looked at me when I came downstairs and started working in the toilet, sweeping it out like I used to. I told myself, Charlie, they make fun of you. Don't get sore because you remember they're not so smart as you once thought they were. And besides, they were once your friends. If they laughed at you, that doesn't mean anything because they liked you too. All right. I don't know. If, if this is friendship, we should probably talk about that. Like your friends, remember, spiked his drink, made him drink alcohol. Without him knowing, he got drunk, stumbled, black eye. They forced him. They tripped him a couple times. They, um, I mean, just a bunch of horrible things. Probably a couple that I'm forgetting. They made him go out and buy a newspaper. And then when he came back, they were gone. Not friends. Not friends. So, Charlie, don't tell yourself they were never your friends. All right. And anytime uh, you have anything you would like to say, I would love to hear it, please. Thoughts. All right, 219 here. One of the new men who came to work there after I went away made a nasty crack. He said, hey, Charlie, I hear you're a very smart fella, a real whiz kid. Say something intelligent. I felt bad. But Joe Carp came over, grabbed him by the shirt, said, leave him alone or break your neck. I didn't expect Joe to take my part, so I guess he's really my friend. All right, now that, that does sound like friendship right there, right? Sticking up for your friend. And I don't even want to use the term, like, sometimes you'll hear this, like, I can pick on my brother, but nobody else can pick on my brother. You know, like, kind of family stays together. I mean, there's there's one thing, like, about picking on, you know, you can have fun with your friends or whatever, but then, like, physically harming them, like, that's that's not what friends do. So, this guy, Joe, did a great thing there, I think, sticking up for him. But before, he wasn't his friend before. I don't think. 
And everybody, remember, everybody wanted him to leave. Like 800 people said, Charlie, you got to get out of here. But anyways, at least he's doing the right thing now. Next paragraph. Later, Frank Riley came over and said, Charlie, if anybody bothers you, tries to take advantage of you, call me or Joe. We'll set him straight. I said, thanks, Frank. I got choked up. So I had to turn around, go into the supply room so he wouldn't see me cry. It's good to have friends. So maybe, can't still can't highlight here, but uh, maybe it is his friend now, both of them. I don't know. Maybe. July 28th. I did a dumb thing today. I forgot I wasn't in Miss Kenyon's class at the adult center anymore like I used to be. I went in, sat down in my old seat in the back of the room. She looked at me funny. She said, Charles? I don't remember. She ever called me that before. Only Charlie. So I said, Hello, Miss Kenyon. I'm ready for my lesson today. Only I lost my reader that we was using. I think a reader is just like a, a book. So we don't call it that anymore. She started to cry and run out of the room. And everybody looked at me. And I saw they wasn't the same people who used to be in my class. Then all of a sudden, I remembered some things about the operation and me getting smart. And I said, holy smoke. Watch your language there, Charlie. Watch your language. Holy smoke. I really pulled the Charlie Gordon that time. I went away before she came back to the room. Now, even he's making fun of himself, saying he pulled the Charlie Gordon. That's why I'm going away from New York for good. I don't want to do nothing like that again. I don't want Miss Kinnian to feel sorry for me. Everybody feels sorry at the factory, and I don't want that either. So, I'm going someplace where nobody knows that Charlie Gordon was once a genius and now he can't even read a book or write good. There's Charlie. Look at that. Look at that face. He does look pretty confused. Well dressed, though. Nice button up shirt. I'm taking a couple books along. And even if I can't read them, I'll practice hard. Maybe I won't forget everything I learned. I don't know. Got bad news for you, Charlie. I think you are going to forget everything. If I try real hard, maybe I'll be a little bit smarter than I was before the operation. Got my rabbit's foot, my lucky penny, and maybe they will help me. Now, I don't know if it was the very first page. It was really early on. Remember that he, he was talking about that rabbit's foot. So it is almost like he's going back to the beginning. He's got his rabbit's foot. He was actually in the class for a brief moment. So I think the author is trying to do that for us, compare the two. Charlie Gordon's, if you, let me make this bigger. If you ever read this, Miss Kinnian, don't be sorry for me. I'm glad I got a second chance to be smart because I learned a lot of things that I never even knew were in this world. And I'm grateful that I saw it all for a little bit. I don't know why I'm dumb again or what I did wrong because I didn't try hard enough. Maybe because I didn't try hard enough. But if I try and practice very hard, maybe I'll get a little smarter and know what all the words are. I remember a little bit how nice I had a feeling with the blue book that has the torn cover when I, I can't, what is that, wrote, when I wrote, when I write. That's why I'm going to keep trying to get smart so I can have that feeling again. It's a good feeling to know things and be smart. I wish I had it right now. If I did, I would sit down and read all the time. Anyway, I bet I'm the first dumb person in the world who ever found out something important for science. I remember I did something, but I don't remember what. I guess it's like I did it for all the dumb people like me. Goodbye, Miss Kinnian, Dr. Strauss, and everybody. And P.S., please tell Dr. Namor not to be such a grouch when people laugh at him and he would have more friends. It's easy to make friends if you let people laugh at you. Jeez, I, that's, I think that's the wrong message. I do think that's the wrong message. I'm going to have lots of friends where I go. PPS. All right. This is, uh, we don't, does anybody use this anymore? It stands for postscript. Postscript. So if we're going like Latin and Greek roots, post means after. It's the opposite of pre. So like if you ever take a pre-test, you're taking a test over stuff you haven't learned yet. Post is after. And then a uh, script is writing. 
So postscript, it's literally writing after the original writing. And then PPS, I guess is post postscript or something, but it comes after PS. Please, if you get a chance, put some flowers on Algernon's grave in the backyard. Oh, oh, how sweet, right? And I didn't, I didn't share. I didn't share. Nice. Perfect. Let me put that back up. That doesn't help right now, but um, right there. Hopefully I shared uh, most of it there. All right. There is a, we may get to some of these things. Am I sharing now? Yeah. We may get to some of these. Some of these you've probably already answered with the, uh, the midway thing. So, but maybe tomorrow we will look at a couple of these things. You do have them in your book. Um, we won't have to answer them. And a lot of these things we have talked about already, like this over here. I won't read it now, but we have talked about some of this stuff. I would like to talk about theme probably tomorrow. Not today. Look at this point of view. You should know this already. We talk a lot about point of view and we'll talk about illusions it's down below there. But enough for today. Essay time.